<clears throat> Hello everybody. I'm sorry for the delay. I've been having some technical issues today for some reason. I hope you guys can hear me okay and see me. Please let me know in the chat if you can. Sorry for the delay guys. I can see there's a few people already in the chat. Um, Stacy, one of our regulars, hello. Welcome back. Um, hi to one, two, three as well, another regular, hi. And Inq, welcome. And Sohi, hi. How are you guys today? Um, hello to Shay. Hi, and Inky says, loud and clear, we can hear and see you. One, two, three says, fantastic, I'm really happy. I was trying to fiddle around with it um, for a few minutes and it wasn't working. So I'm glad we're all set up now. Thank you. Hi, Nancy, welcome. And So Wu, welcome back. And hello to Annie, hi. So how are you guys? Any, um, anything interesting going on in your lives this week? Um... Did you have a good weekend at all? I know it's Tuesday, it probably feels like the weekend was a long time ago, but. <laughs> uh, AR, hello, it has been a while. Oh, you missed us, we missed you too. <laughs> yes, I haven't seen your name there for a while. How are you, how's everything? Hello to Over the Moon as well, hi, how are you? And Young Dan as well. And we have someone called Hat. Hatse or Hatche, I'm not sure how to pronounce your name, but thank you for joining us today. Uh, and Cherry Blossom, hi Cherry Blossom. Uh, Annie says it's getting cooler here, in here. You should say here, not in here, but um, yeah, it's the same in England. We had some very hot weather recently, um, a few days of high temperatures, and then suddenly it went back to cool. Um, I don't know why I'm wearing this actually. I'm wearing a summer dress. It's not um, actually summery weather at all. But I don't know. I just really love summer clothes and I think I really miss them. So I didn't get much of a chance to wear them this year. <laughs> so um, yeah. Young Dan said it's chilly at the moment. Uh -huh. Yes, a little bit chilly here as well. I think it must be about 15 degrees maybe or so. Could be more. Yeah, I got it, 14, there we go. Um, so this is actually my last live stream for a couple of weeks because I'm going on holiday um, for the next two weeks. Uh, just to let you know, because I know my regulars love you know, joining me every week uh, for this live stream and I love teaching you as well. But I won't be here next week and I won't be here the following week just so that you know in advance. I'll be back on the 5th of October, so two weeks away, because I'm taking some time off. I'm actually getting married, so this is why I'm taking so much time off. Um, I'm getting married abroad, so I'm traveling there and preparing things for the wedding and finally getting married. Um, I was supposed to get married last June, but it didn't happen because of COVID restrictions, but finally it's happening, so. Um, yeah, this is why I am going to be away. I just thought I'd let you know. Hi to Justine, welcome back. <laughs> Annie, I like your little emojis. Uh, thank you for your congratulations in queue. Thank you very much. Uh, 123 is asking, will we have a live stream on Friday now? Flora has gone. Um, not for the moment, potentially in the future, but for the moment, it's just going to be me on Tuesdays. Um, but we may... Um, start another one in the future, but not right now. I'll let you know when we do though. Um, Inq has asked me if I'm going to Malta. Yes, I am. I'm going to Malta to get married, which is where my family live. So hopefully the weather will be nice and warm at that time of year. Um, so he says, oh, good for you. Thank you. Thank you for your congratulations, guys. That's really sweet. Um, yeah, I'm feeling a little bit stressed out at the moment with all the planning for the wedding, but I'm also getting quite excited to, to get married finally. So yeah, mixed feelings at the moment. <laughs> Stacy said that she got vaccinated last Thursday. Wow, that's really good. Your arm sore, but you don't have any other side effects. That's really good. Yeah, yeah, I also had a sore arm after mine, but nothing else. So we're the lucky ones, I guess. 
Human's Desire said, I'm going to be vaccinated Moderna tomorrow, but I'd like to cancel if I can. Oh, why do you want to cancel? Are you nervous? Is that why? Uh, thank you for your congratulations, So Wu. That's really sweet. Uh, in Q, yes, I have had a hen party. I had it back in May, so a while ago. So plenty of time to recover from that. <laughs> and hello to Y. So JY, welcome, welcome to the live stream. Right, so enough about me. I wanted to um, share with you some information that I think is quite useful today because a lot of my students often um, ask me about when, when can I say for, when can I say to, um, do I say difficult to me, difficult for me, like which one is correct. So a lot of people get confused with this. So I thought I would share some tips with you, some um, some ways of knowing which one is the best word to use today. So hopefully you'll find this really useful. Of course, as usual, if you have any questions about anything, please let me know in the chat and I'll try and answer as many of you as I can. And at the end of the stream, I'm going to be doing a little um, mini quiz, as usual, um, for you to answer. So stay tuned till the end, okay? Back to the chat, Annie has asked, what is a hen party? Oh, actually, that's a good piece of vocabulary. Um, a hen party is a party that women have before they get married. So they get together with their girlfriends and they have a kind of celebration. Um, in American English, they call it a bachelorette party or a bridal shower or something like that. But in England, we call it a hen party or a hen do. But men do not have a hen party. They have what we call a stag, stag party. Um, I don't know why we call them this, but um, that's what we call them. And they're very important <laughs> before you get married. Right. So I'm going to share my screen as usual. So please let me know if you have any problems seeing this, but hopefully it should be okay. If all the settings are right for me today. Here we go. Okay, it looks like it's working. Um, should be okay. All right, so let's get started. Before we actually get into the use of four and two, as usual, I have a little um, pre-quiz question for you. So I'm going to show you something. It's not really related to four and two, but I thought it was quite interesting. Um, Young Dan said we can see, that's really good, fantastic. So I'd like you to have a look at this picture that I found here and tell me which common expression does this picture illustrate. So we have an expression in English that we, that we say, like a kind of uh, proverb or saying, I guess you could call it, um, related to this picture. Um, and I want you to tell me in the chat if you think you know what it means or what it is, rather. I won't confirm the answer until towards the end of the stream. So you'll have to wait around. Um, but yeah, you can guess and see if you get it right at the end. We've got a couple of answers coming in. Okay, okay. All right, I'm going to give you a little clue that I wrote. This is something that maybe your parents said to you when you were growing up. So I don't know if you say this in your languages, but this is a common thing that parents might say if, for example, you keep asking them for things when, you know, you want things, you want them to buy you things, they might say this. It looks like some of you already know this one, so well done, but I will definitely confirm the answer at the end. Um... So here we go. Let's get started with number one on our list, four and two. So here we go. First one. All right. So the first thing to remember is that we can use both two and four, these prepositions, when we want to show purpose. Okay. So when we want to show what the reason for doing something is, what the purpose of something is, why are we doing it? What is it for? etc. But you just have to be careful of the grammar um, that comes after these two words. So I'll give you an example. Have a look at this one. So here we have, um, I'm learning English to get a better paid job 
one day. Okay, so as you can see, this person is giving the purpose of them learning English, right? So why are you learning English? I'm learning English to get a better paid job, okay? So we're using the infinitive form here, the to plus verb, okay? It would be wrong to say forget, okay, or forgetting. That, that wouldn't sound right, okay? So you have to use to plus verb. So notice, um, yeah, to plus the infinitive verb. If you want to sound a bit more formal, you could say in order to plus the verb or so as to. So you could say I'm learning English in order to get a better paid job, okay? Or I'm learning English so as to get a better paid job, okay? So using to plus the infinitive form, the basic form of the verb, to show purpose, why you're doing something. Let's have a look at some other example sentences like this. So you could say, I popped into the supermarket to buy some potatoes on my way home. Okay. So you're giving the purpose of going to the supermarket. Why did you go to the supermarket? Why did you pop in to the supermarket? I popped in to buy some potatoes. So you're giving a reason. Okay. You're giving a purpose. Another example, he went, oh, sorry, there's a typo over there. It should say the. He went to the library. That should say the over there. To do some research for his project. Okay, so he went to the library to do some research. Why did he go to the library? So he went to do some research. Okay, so this is the purpose. So going to the chat, um, InQ has said for a better paid job. Um, well, you can use um, for with nouns, you're right, but it wouldn't quite sound right there because, of course, you want to emphasize that this person wants to have this better job or get this better paid job. So you would kind of need to include the verb get instead. Over the Moon has said, I'm running every day to lose my muffin top. Perfect. Very good example. Yeah. <laughs> well done. Annie says, I'm learning English in order to speak with you. Yeah, exactly. Very good. Lovely. And somebody has said, I'd like to buy some potatoes. <laughs> Why not? Potatoes are, are great, especially when they're in the shape of chips. One, two, three says muffin top means big belly. Basically, yeah, yeah, a muffin top is like, um, you know, when you wear your jeans or your trousers and you can see a little bit of your stomach popping over the edge, you know, like a little bit of fat, that's called a muffin top. <laughs> Imagine a muffin, so the muffin is in the case and then there's a little bit popping out, that's your belly. Hi, silver paper, that's okay. You're just in time for the rest of number one. Um, okay, but if we use for, we need to use a noun, okay? So you could say, for example, I popped into the supermarket for some potatoes on my way home, okay? So in this case, again, you're giving a reason, a purpose for going to the supermarket, um, but you're using a noun, in this case, potato, so you could say for potatoes, okay? Another example, do you want to go for a pizza after the film? So I'm, ask, I'm saying that the purpose of going is for a pizza, okay? So well, that's why we need to use for because you have the noun, a pizza, okay? So don't forget to plus infinitive verb, for plus noun. This is when you're showing the purpose um, of doing something, okay? And then I have one other thing to show you, which is this one. This is slightly different, but it's still kind of related to purpose, I suppose, because you're giving the function of something. So why, um, why do you use that thing? Like, what is it for, okay? So in this case, we normally use for plus ing verb, the gerund form of the verb. 
I'll give you an example. Take a look at this picture. It will help. Okay, it's not related to this one, but the next one, next example. So you could say this app is for sharing information with colleagues. Okay, so you've got an app on your phone and somebody might say, oh, what's, what's that app for? What's it for? Like, what's the function of that app? And you could say, oh, this, this is for sharing information. Okay, so for plus ing. Another example, what's this for? That, it's for shredding paper. So the picture at the bottom helps you with that one. Okay, so what is that machine? Maybe I've never seen one before, or maybe it's new in the office, and you say, what's that for? Oh, it's for shredding paper. Okay, so that's the function of that machine. Okay, so let me know if you understood this. Um, this is everything for number one. Let me know if you have any questions at all about it. Um, but I do have some questions for you, actually, um, to give you a kind of middle quiz. I found this picture online of this kind of little animal. I guess it's a pig. Um, and I was wondering whether you knew what it's for. <laughs> what is the function of this? I'll show you another one as well. So I'll give you a clue. Both of these um, gadgets or items can be used in the kitchen. Okay, so they're kind of unusual kitchen gadgets. Can you tell me what you think they are for? Remember, use for plus ing, okay, when you're giving functions. Okay, Annie said it's for gathering coins. Ah, so you think it's like a money box or something. No, it's not. So think about the kitchen. So specifically used in the kitchen, these two items. Any other suggestions, anyone? <laughs> Good try though. Yeah, we do have money boxes in the shape of pigs in England, yeah? Especially when you're a child, you might get one from the bank. We call it a piggy bank. So you put coins in your piggy bank to save for a rainy day, maybe. Okay, Son Gyu says the knuckle on the right is for removing meat from bones. Aha, very good. That's actually a very good guess. Well done. Well done. <laughs> very good. So maybe, maybe if you have like a piece of pork, for example, and you want to take the meat off the bone, yeah? Or beef or something like that. Yeah, very good. And Selena has said, I think it's for holding and carrying pots. Very good. Um, that is correct. Yeah, it is. I will show you. Uh, just give me one second. Uh, and I will do that. So here we go. So the first one, it's for keeping the lid of a pan open. So it's kind of related to what Selena said. Um, well, a pan, or you could call it a pot if you want. So if it's like bubbling, you know, in the kitchen, and you don't want it to bubble over, so you don't want all the hot water to go all over the place, you can put one of these little piggies on the edge of the pan so that it keeps the pan open like that. <laughs> Um, and then the other one, which I think it was Sungyu, I think you guessed correctly here, well done. These are for shredding meat. So you see I used the word shredding with paper just a moment ago. You can also use it for meat. So if you, for example, have like pulled pork or something, pulled pork is really popular here. Um, you can put them on your hands and kind of shred the meat off the bone using these. Yeah. So I'll show you a picture of each one. So there's a little piggy, oh, well in this case it's a little duck. They have different um, sorts of animals. That's for keeping the lid open over there. <laughs> Young Dan said, I, it's amazing, I want to see how the pig keeps the lid open. <laughs> yeah, so like this basically. So it's kind of resting on the edge of the pan, I guess, and then the lid sits on top. It's really cute. I agree, Sohi. 
Um, I need to buy one of these, I think. And the other one, you can see over here, this person is shredding some meat over there. So it's like claws, like a bear, <laughs> bear claws, kind of shredding the meat, getting it off the bone, ready to eat. Yeah. <laughs> they love it. Everyone loves it. So cute. <laughs> I agree. They had so many cute ones when I looked online. They had little pigs, ducks, sheep. Lots of cute colors as well, like pastel pink, pastel yellow, pastel green. Yeah, we should get one. <laughs> I also need one, uh, young Daniel, right? <gasps> okay, so you get the idea, right? Two plus infinitive, four plus noun, and four plus ing, like this for function. Okay, well done, guys. Right, shall we move on to the second one? Here we go. Number two. Okay, now this one is the one that probably um, people have issues with, okay? A lot of my students have issues with this one, but it's quite simple if you think about it. I'm going to explain, okay? So when you say, to me, so when you use this expression, to me, okay, this is obviously giving your opinion, okay? So let me give you an example. Aerodynamics, that sounds difficult to me. Okay, so this is my opinion, okay? So it sounds difficult to me. So my opinion is that it sounds difficult, okay? So you can use difficult, the adjective, to, and then the person, okay? Um, and then if we compare it with the other one, for me, now normally we use for me, obviously you don't have to use me, it could be another pronoun like for him, for her, for us, whatever. Um, we use this normally when we want to show a positive effect. So something that creates a positive effect on us or a negative effect. So it needs to have some sort of effect on that person. For example, aerodynamics, that's difficult for me. So in this case, um, learning about aerodynamics is too difficult for me, okay? So this means that it has a kind of negative effect on me. And then obviously the negative effect is that it's too hard, it's difficult, yeah? So yeah, this is a kind of comparison of the same sort of sentence with a slightly difficult, different meaning, okay? So let's say, your friend says that they're going to study aerodynamics. They say, oh, I'm starting aerodynamics um, next week. You say, really? Oh, that sounds difficult to me. So in my opinion, that's going to be difficult. Or will you help me study aerodynamics? Oh, that's too difficult for me. Oh, no. For me personally, so for, that's going to have a negative effect on me. Okay. I hope that makes it clear, but I will give you a couple of other examples to help you out. Let's have a look at some other examples with to, okay? Um, so, to me, that film didn't deserve to win an Oscar, okay? So, by saying to me, it means in my opinion, okay? That's what I think. And then another one. Do you think this outfit is all right for the gala? Hmm, you look a bit too casual to me. Okay, so it's not too casual for me because obviously it doesn't have a negative or positive effect on you. It's got nothing to do with that. In my opinion, you look too casual, too casual for this gala. Okay, so it's too casual to me. And another example, I thought the food was great, but to him, it was too salty. So in his opinion, it was too salty. That's his opinion. So all of these ones are expressing opinion, okay? Not effects, but more like opinions, what we think of something. Great, so let's have a look at the chat. Peace, welcome, Peace. Peace says, this live class is useful for me. Is it okay? Yes, perfect, well done. It's useful for you because it gives you a positive effect. It makes a positive effect on your life. It, 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 it is useful. So yeah, definitely correct. Well done, peace. Okay, let me give you some examples with four. Is the soup too spicy for him? 
So in this case, mm, maybe you can see that this guy is going red in the face. They look like they're going to explode from eating something too spicy. And it's too spicy for him. So it's not his opinion. It's the effect that the soup is having on him. So the effect is, oh, it's too spicy for him. Another example. I hate exercising, but I know it's good for me. So this means it has a good effect on my body. It's good for my health. Okay, so it's good for me. It's not to do with opinion. It's to do with the effect that it has. Okay. And the last one, what time shall I pick you up? And the other person says, is six-ish okay for you? So is that all right for you? Does it have a positive effect on you? Is this positive for you? Okay. So, yeah, these ones are a bit different to the two. So remember, to me is, or to someone is opinion. And for someone is the effect that it has on them. So it could be positive or it could be negative effect. Okay, so that's just a little roundup over there. Inku says, cold enough for you? Yeah, so let's say it's a hot day and you put the air conditioning on and you say, is this cool enough for you? So is this having a good effect on you? Is it okay for you? Yeah. Very good, Inku. Uh, Chan has asked me, what is six-ish? Yeah, so it means around six. So if you say six, uh, like a time, plus ish, so when you add ish, this suffix, it means approximately or about. So six-ish means around six o'clock, okay? All right, I think that is all for uh, number two. Let me know if you have any other questions. I hope this is clear, but we have a couple more to get through, so I'm going to move on to number three on our list. Here we go, number three. Okay, so this one is a bit different. This one may be more obvious, perhaps potentially, to some of you. Although, to be honest, my students still make mistakes with this. So I thought it would be good to include it. Um, so bear with me if you already know this. Here we go. Two plus destination. Okay, so in this case, when I say destination, it could be an actual place, but it could also be the direction in which something is going. So it's not necessarily a place, maybe. Okay. Have a look at the first one. So you could say, oh no, I sent that message to the wrong person. So the message goes or went in the direction of the wrong person. So in that direction. So it's destination or direction. Okay. Another example, this one is destination. So we're going to the beach this weekend. Okay. So this is our destination. We're going to that place. Okay. Another example, she moved to Japan last year. Again, she, she went in that direction. She went to that destination. And finally, he threw the ball to his friend. Now, this would mean that he threw the ball in the direction of his friend so that his friend could catch it. Don't say he threw the ball at his friend. Obviously, well, you can say that, but the meaning would be different. If you say he threw the ball at his friend, <laughs> it means that he wanted to hit his friend. Maybe his fr he hated his friend, <laughs> so he wanted to hit him, so he threw it at him. But if you throw the ball to someone, you are hoping that they will catch it. Okay, somebody has written in the chat, I'm going to Seoul. Exactly. Perfect. That's lovely. So when you talk about cities or countries, you can say to go to that country or to that city. Well done. Um, yeah, but there are a couple of exceptions that my students often make mistakes with. So I thought I would share them with you on the next page. Have a look at these. Now, be careful. When you use the word home, okay, we don't use to. So you have the verb go or the verb come, of course. Um, but remember, this one's a bit of an exception. We don't say go to home 
or come to home. In fact, we just say go home or come home. So, as you can see from this example, I went to home late last night. This would be incorrect. You should say, I went home late last night. So, watch out for this one. It's a very common error. Okay, a couple of things in the chat. Over the Moon says, how can I get to the closest station? Yes, that would be perfect. Well done. You can say it that way. One, two, three says, the king has returned to the top of the throne. <laughs> Very good, but you've written throne in the wrong way. It's written T-H-R-O-N-E in this context. <laughs> but yes, returned to would be correct. Well done. Uh, hello to Foodie. Welcome. Um, so he says, I took the bus home. Very good. Very good. Stacy has a question. Can I say stay at home? Yes, you can. Very good. So if you are there um, in your house, you can say I am at home or I'm staying at home. But you can also say stay home as well. So what are you going to do tonight? Oh, I'm going to stay home tonight or I'm going to stay at home. You can say both of those in queue. Both would be fine. Uh, Foodie says, can you say welcome to my home? Yes, you can. Yes. you Because if you say welcome, you normally say welcome to something. Okay, so it's because of the verb welcome that we use to. Yeah. That's okay, one, two, three. I'm here to help. Um, yes, let's have a look at the next one. Uh, so Jin is asking about exceptions. Be careful with this other one that I'm showing you now because this is a, another common error. Don't say go to abroad, okay? Abroad is actually an adjective. Um, we don't say this. We actually just say go abroad, okay? So, for example, I can't wait to go to abroad next year. This would be wrong. You should say I can't wait to go abroad next year, okay? Um, and I'm sure a lot of people are feeling the same way. I can't wait to go abroad next year. <laughs> You're very welcome, foodie. Let me know if you guys have any other questions because we're going to move on to number four in a second. Overboard means overseas. Um, yes, yes, exactly. It basically means to a foreign country. So you're going to another country. Yeah. Sojin said, what's the difference between abroad and overseas? Um, that's a good question. I think I would use both of them in some situations. Um, well, both of them mean that it's in another country. Um, I guess if you say overseas, um, it literally means that that country you're going to is across the ocean. Okay. So if you're going to a neighboring country, you know, like a country next to yours where there's no sea that you need to cross, then probably you wouldn't say go overseas. But if you, if you went somewhere that was actually over the sea, then you would say overseas. Okay. But abroad can be used for anywhere. So you can go abroad to a neighboring country or go abroad to a country that's far, far away. It doesn't matter. Okay. Foodie, I once said to my colleague, welcome abroad. Oh, <laughs> yes, I see what you did there. Yeah, it should be aboard, yeah. <laughs> like on, um, on a ship or on a plane, welcome aboard the ship or plane. Yeah, uh, that's okay, so no problem. Selena has said like France to Germany. Yeah, exactly. So in that case, you wouldn't say overseas. Um, you would say abroad instead. All right, let's move on to number four. Here we go. So number four, four plus person. So I'm gonna give you an example of this to start off with. What can I do for you? So in this case, for you, so four plus person. So in this case, what do you think it means if you say for you? Um, any idea what the kind of meaning of four plus you in this case is? Let me know in the chat if you have any suggestions. <clears throat> 
One, two, three says, how can I help you? Yes, very good, very good. Help, Chan says. Yeah, exactly. So you're doing something in order to help someone. So for that person. Yeah. How can I help you? Exactly. Well done. Yeah. So sometimes you might say for plus the pronoun, the person, to show that you are helping someone. Okay. So in this case, maybe you're in a shop and the shop assistant or sales assistant says, what can I do for you? Meaning, how can I help you? Okay. Some other examples. Could you open the door for me? I've got my hands full. So you're asking this person to help you. So in order to help you, can you do that for me? Can you open the door for me? So that's kind of like a, a favor, I guess. Like in the picture we have here. And the other one, I can book the taxi for us if you want. I know you're really busy at the moment. So I know that my friend's really busy. Maybe they don't have much time to do any bookings and things like that. So I'm offering to book the taxi for us both. So you're offering to help out, basically. Okay, so by offering help, you can say for that person. All right. So this is one way of using for. Can you think of any examples similar to this? Let me know in the chat if you have another example you can share with us. But I am going to move on to the next slide because you can also say, apart from four plus a person, you could also say four plus something. And you'll see what I mean with these examples. So you could say, those soldiers are fighting for their country. Okay. So they are doing this in order to help their country. Okay. So we use four plus country. Another example, we want to do what's best for the company. Okay, so we're doing everything to help the company. We want to help the company. So it's for the company that we're doing this. Okay, so you can also use it instead of um, with a person, you can use it with a thing as well. Some examples in the chat. Young says, can you make some pizza for me? Yes, that's perfect. Exactly, well done. Very good example. So Jin, my mum cooks for me. Yeah, that's perfect, lovely. Chan says, I prefer prepared this one for you. Lovely, 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 lovely. And somebody's written, can you send mail for me? Yeah, so this basically is a little bit different, I suppose, your example, because it's more of instead of you, right? So you're sending an email or sending a letter instead of that person. So you're doing it for them. Okay, but it's good. It's correct. Sung Yu says, can you do the homework for me? Yes, exactly. Very good. Yeah, so again, it kind of means instead of me in this example, similar to the previous, but it's correct. Well done. Okay, let's move on to the last one. Um, I just wanted to compare two things here with four and two. So to do something similar to what we just said, do something for plus person. So to do something for a person, as we said a moment ago, uh, I'll give you another example. For example, I will do the laundry for you. Okay. So what does it mean if you say, I will do the laundry for you? Let me know in the chat. Over the moon says, I've been swamped with work these days. That's a very good expression, over the moon. Lovely. So I bought my mother's present for me. Oh, so he bought my mother's present for me. Oh, okay, yes, yes, very good, very good, that's perfect. So you didn't have time to buy your mother's present, so someone else bought it for you, right? Instead of you, perfect, perfect, exactly. You're welcome. Eklas says, instead of you, yes, that's right. Chan says, I will do it instead of you, for your benefit. Yeah, perfect, perfect. So in order, this is basically doing something on behalf of someone else, okay? On behalf of is basically the same as saying um, instead of, 
Okay, so well done, guys. And obviously, this has a positive meaning because you're doing it for the person. You're helping them. You're doing something um, to benefit them somehow. Okay, so it has a positive effect, positive meaning. But look at this one. Do something to someone. For example, I can't believe you did that to me. So to me. So we're using the same thing, but we're replacing the for with the to. What does that mean? Any idea what kind of effect this has or meaning? Do you think it's positive or negative? What do you think? Let me know in the chat. Okay, so some of you are saying negative. Yeah, it does have a negative effect. It has a, has a more of a negative connotation. You're right. Jan says, act something to someone. Yeah, I get what you mean. Yeah. That's right. Um, very good, guy. So it basically means that you do something to someone else directly. So something that directly affects the other person, but in a negative way. Okay. So it's quite different if you say, do that for me or do that to me. Okay. So if you do something for someone, it's like you're doing them a favor. You're helping them. It's a positive thing. But if you do something to that person, it sounds like you're affecting them negatively. You're doing something to um, annoy them or upset them or hurt them maybe, okay? So that's quite different. I'll give you another example. And this time I want you to tell me what you think is right. So what's the missing word here? I wasn't able to attend the presentation, so my colleague had to do it in me. Any idea what the missing word would be here? Is it for or is it to? I have another example as well. I didn't mean to do that, mm, you. I'm so sorry. So for the first one, Chan has suggested for. My colleague had to do it for me. Very good, very good. That is correct, fantastic. For is right. So in this case, my colleague did it as a favor. Um, or maybe my colleague did it instead of me. But in the other one, I didn't mean to do that in you. I'm so sorry. In the second case, yeah, it would be two. Fantastic. Well done, guys. Yeah, I didn't mean to do that to you. So maybe I did something that hurt you, um, but, you know, I didn't mean to do that. I didn't intend to do that to you. I'm so sorry. So it had a, something had a negative effect on this person. Yeah. Well done, guys. That's fantastic. Very, very good. Okay. Um, I think that is all. Aha, it's mini quiz time. But I mustn't forget what I showed you earlier in the, um, in the lesson. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to share that with you again. Because at the beginning of the stream today, I showed you a picture and I asked you what you thought this expression was. Okay, here we go. So this is what I asked you at the very beginning of the stream and I must admit some of you did get it right. Yeah. Um, can anyone tell me now what is the full expression? So the first word in this expression is money. So money, blah, 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 blah. What do you think? <laughs> Inky says, do you think money grows on trees? Yes, that's perfect. That's perfect. I wasn't thinking of it as a question, but more of a sentence, a statement rather. Let's see if anyone else um, chimes in and, and gives us an answer. So it should be money, mm, grow, mm, mm, like that. <laughs> okay, I'll give you a clue. Money doesn't, what's the, what's the rest of the expression? Money doesn't, what? 
Very good. Silver paper's got it. Nearly, nearly. The grammar's not quite right. <laughs> so it should be money doesn't grow on trees. Money doesn't grow on trees. So yes, when you're little and you keep asking for things from your parents, can I have this? Can I have that? Can you buy me this? Oh, I want a new Xbox. Oh, I want a new bike. And they say, oh, money doesn't grow on trees, you know. Yeah, so basically, yeah, we don't have never-ending money <laughs> to buy you all of those things. Money doesn't grow on trees. Yeah. <laughs> well done, guys. Um, is this something that you normally say in your languages? Because we say it a lot in English um, when we talk about money. Right, I'm going to move to the mini quiz, so bear with me a second and I will go back oops, I will go back to the mini quiz page for you so we can do our three questions for today. Okay, so mini quiz time. Are you ready for the mini quiz? As usual with mini quizzes, um, we basically will have three questions. After each question, you get a choice of A, B or C. And I want you to write your answer in the chat. Is it A, is it B or C? The first person to get it right is the winner. So Nancy says, in Mexico, we say that. Aha, uh -huh. okay, I thought so. Silver Paper says, in Korea, we say money doesn't appear digging on ground. Aha, okay, yeah, similar type of thing, I guess, right? But you should say digging underground or in the ground, I guess. All right, you're ready. Here we go, guys. We're going to start with number one. Here we go. My question is, in what kind of situation might someone speak for you? Speak for you. Notice the preposition. Is it A, when you're not there, B, when they want to have a conversation with you, or C, when you're having an argument? Which one do you think it is, A, B, or C? Write your answers in the chat, please. Okay, some answers are coming in. Good job, it looks like from my end that Take one was the first one to get it right. Well done, Take one. Fantastic answer. The answer is A. Good job. If you speak for someone, as we said before, it's like you're doing it instead of them. So you're doing it on their behalf. Um, so maybe you're not there and you're unable to speak for yourself. So instead, somebody else will speak for you instead of you. Yeah? Very good. Well done. Okay. Let's go on to number two in our mini quiz. Number two is, which one is correct? Sentence A, she's married with an American businessman. B, she's married for an American businessman. Or C, she's married to an American businessman. Which one do you think is correct? A, B, or C? Okay, we have some answers coming in. I'll just wait for a few more. Okay, some mixed answers. You seem to be torn between A and C, but it looks like from my side that Sojin was the first one to get it right. Well done, Sojin. The answer is in fact C. Very good. We normally say married to, not married with. This is a common mistake. A lot of my students say married with, but it's actually wrong. We say married to. So you're married to someone. So good job, Sojin, for getting that first. Well, well done. Fantastic. Okay. Next one. Final question for you guys. <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. Um, oh, no, I shouldn't have shown you that. Okay. Okay. What is a corkscrew for? Is it A, for hanging things on walls? Is it B, for opening bottles of wine? Or is it C, for chopping garlic? A, B or C, corkscrew. 
Well done, well done. I actually stupidly put the photo there. I wasn't supposed to put this picture there. I was supposed to reveal the picture afterwards, so I kind of helped you a little bit. Silly me. Anyway, it looks like Chan was the first one to get the right answer. The answer is B for opening bottles of wine. <laughs> um, I wanted to check if you knew the word corkscrew, first of all. Um, but yes, this is a corkscrew, as you can see here. Good job. Corkscrew is for that. This is the function of a corkscrew. And Selena says for opening bottles of beer too. Yes, you're right. You're right. Perfect. <laughs> it does look scary, right? Okay, well, that is all, guys. Um, thank you so much for joining me today. As I said at the beginning of the stream, uh, I'm not going to be here for the next couple of weeks because I'm going to be away on holiday. So my next live stream will actually be on the 5th of October, Tuesday the 5th of October. Please join me then. Um, but also, another thing, we are moving this live stream over to our other channel, so BritSense other channel. Um, I hope you have already subscribed to that. If you haven't, you should. I will paste the link into the chat now. Um, but basically, we're switching over to our second um, BritSent account, okay? So what I will do now, just to help you out, is I'm going to put the... Just give me one second. And I will put this in the chat for, for you, so that you know exactly which link to go on, all right? Here we go, just give me one second. My computer's being a little bit slow today for some reason. Okay. Okay, here we go, it's in the chat now. I hope you can see it. There we go, that's the link. So if you click on that link, subscribe, you will get notifications. And I will see you there on the 5th of October. Please join us on that channel on the 5th of October. Don't forget, I want to see you when I get back. And I hope you have a lovely couple of weeks. Thank you for your wishes. Um, and I will see you then. Take care and stay safe. And I will see you very soon. Goodbye, guys. <laughs>